Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura. I'm going to be your host for this episode. Uh, uh, and this is the, the show for uh, people who live and work uh, uh, in, in, in condominiums. And so hopefully this show will give you some uh, helpful information. Uh, today, I'm really pleased to have as my guest, Council Member Carol Fukunaga. Uh, she's the council uh, representative for uh, Council District 6. Hi, Carol. Aloha. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for joining us. I mean, Carol's been our big advocate on this particular issue. So I asked her to be here uh, because there's going to be a hearing on June 29th at the city council, right, on this, on this issue. And so well, why don't we just start with a little bit of background. Uh, okay. Okay. And, and, and Carol represents District 6. And so you can see District 6. And in fact, you have, uh, you have, you have one of the larger districts with uh, high rise buildings that are affected by this law, right? That's correct. My district has um, the most of any of the other council districts. So we were very concerned about the impact of this law on uh, single, I guess, uh, condo owners as well as condo associations. Okay, and well, we're, way of, yeah, we're talking about uh, ordinance 1814 that was passed in May of uh, 2018. 2019. 2019. 2019. And this was the, the, the reason for this bill, the fire safety uh, bill, it was because of the fire at the Marco Polo in July of 2017, right? And, 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 and why, why was the bill, I mean, how did the bill come about? Okay, this bill was uh, adopted, you know, when um, the Marco Polo fire took place. And so at that time, Mayor Caldwell introduced legislation to require that uh, fire sprinklers be installed in uh, individual condo units for all condo properties. And for those buildings that were built before 1975, this would have been a, a significant hardship for many of the owners who have never envisioned that they would have to uh, retrofit their buildings. And for some buildings, this would become a real um, uh, safety and um, construction burden. So what we did was we set up a task force uh, to develop recommendations to um, present, you know, that would help us address how best to um, provide safety, as well as uh, address the impacts of the legislation upon individual condo owners. And so that task force was um, chaired by former Chief uh, Nevis. And I believe that um, Jane was a member of the task force. So she, she can also speak to some of the recommendations that came from that, that task force. Right, and, and uh, I think, I mean, what we were, what we were tasked to do was to figure out, you know, some type of, um, come up with some type of uh, framework that would, uh, you know, that would provide safety to the first responders who have to enter a, a burning building and uh, to allow people who are inside the building to safely exit. That was the task. How do we, you know, how do we come up with some kind of legislation that would protect both Types of both parties, and and uh, and the Marco Polo was template. I mean, we heard all kinds of stories about all all the bad things that they found in that fire, like vertical openings, which are uh, when 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 you make a building, right? You you have to make whole, you you pour you put a core in it so that you can run all your wires and 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 whatever. And 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 so what they do is they seal these holes. But after over time, after 30, 40 years, like these, some of these buildings were built in the late 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. right? Those seals are gone. And so what you have is this opening and fire travels and, and air goes up, right? So that's why they said that the fire and people who watched on TV and they saw the fire moving up the building. And you say, well, how can that happen? It's because they were traveling through these vertical openings that, you know, and, and, and the fire was just moving. And so that's why vertical openings and high rises are considered to be not a good thing. 
And you know, one of the deficiencies that are checked, and that's one of the things that you know happens in in the in the uh, fire safety ordinance. What we wanted to do is we want to strike a balance because sprinklers are so expensive. I mean, you're talking, multi, you know, not not a million dollars. You're talking several millions of dollars, and that's just a very high price to pay for a retrofitting. And so, what we wanted to do was come up with alternatives. In other words, if you didn't want to spend fourteen, fifteen million dollars on a fire sprinkler to retrofit your building, what else could you do? And that's when the life safety evaluation was uh, discussed and adopted. And what it is, it's, it's a plan. And it, it means that, you know, buildings have to go in certain buildings. If you're, you have to be over 10 stories tall and you, you know, you, you don't, you know, if you have vertical openings, which are, you walk outside of your unit and you're, you've got air instead of a corridor, instead of a wall, that's called uh, open exterior corridors. And so if you are, over 10 stories and you don't have exterior open exterior quarters, you have to do a life safety evaluation and get a passing score. And uh, the fire department, you know, uh, is, is the, um, I guess is the regulator, but the, you, each building hires a licensed professional to do the life safety evaluation. And we came up with something called a matrix. And the matrix is like a spreadsheet. And it has it, it has 17 items. And every, you know, the licensed professional will do an inspection and it will basically check these 17 items. And if they aren't, um, if they're, it, it, you know, if they're not completely up to snuff, I mean, up to code, then they will give you, uh, they, they will knock down points. And, and at the end, you know, you have to get a passing score. And if you don't get a passing score, then you have to make changes to your building to make it safer so that, you know, you do get a passing score on the life safety evaluation, then you don't have to do the fire sprinklers. And yes, what we found out is that there's a lot of these buildings that were, you know, built, you know, 40, you know, 50 years ago, you have a lot of vertical openings and, and you, in order to, you know, get a passing score, you can't have two floors. I mean, if you have two floors with vertical openings, then you're, you're, you're going to fail the life safety evaluation. So you figure if you've got a 30-story building and two of your floors have got vertical openings, you're not going to pass it. But that doesn't mean that it's over. It means that you just have to do some other things to make up for the fact that, you know, you have vertical openings. But it, it doesn't mean that you have to ignore the, you have to fix the vertical openings, which are expensive. You know, if you can imagine every floor, you've got to put the seals back on all of those openings to make sure that you don't create a situation where there's an updraft where the fire is going to spread throughout the building. And, um, but, um, uh, you know, and, and, and people who, uh, you know, uh, boards and uh, uh, directors and owners who are concerned can check their, uh, check the matrix. Excuse me. They can go onto the Honolulu Fire Department website, and they can, you know, check the matrix, which is which, which I said is a spreadsheet, and it deals with seventeen items that are in your building, things like standpipes and vertical openings, and whether you have smoke detectors or whether you have louvers on your doors, or you, you know, if your door isn't fire rated. I mean. There are 17 items, and, and, and this way you can go on to the matrix and figure out, you know, what's there and have your building people go through your building and, and check and see if, you know, you have to, you know, fix them. If you have louvers on your doors, you got to replace those doors. If you don't have fire rated doors, you got to replace the fire, you know, and, and, and the fire rated doors means it's got to be hard. It's got to be solid door, cannot be hollow, right? And it's got to be a certain width. I think it's 1.56 and it's got to be solid. And your corridor doors, there's a metal plate that, that's right by where, it's, where the door jam is. And it will tell you how long that door will hold back fire. And so these are things that, you know, if, if buildings are interested on what the licensed professional is going to check, they should go on to the fire department's website, look at the matrix and figure out you know, how, what items 
they can check and, and fix and replace before they do their life safety evaluation. But they have to do their life safety evaluation. And, and in most cases, and what and, and the fire department under this ordinance has to do a what is it, six-month report that they report to the city, right? And that's what raises the concern that's leading to this meeting on the 29th. Because the fire department is reporting, I think they've got over only half of the 360 buildings in Honolulu, right, that have submitted life safety evaluations? That's correct. There's been about uh, 150 or more that have submitted life safety evaluation uh, forms. However, the fire department has also reported that only six of the properties have received passing scores. So on top of those buildings that have not submitted a life safety evaluation form, or have not come up with a plan for their life safety evaluations, uh, they are also kind of under the gun at this point because uh, we've had to extend the deadlines several in several uh, instances over the last two years. So for example, the life safety evaluation form needs to be completed in three years beyond May 3rd, 2018. And it was supposed to have expired this year in 2021. However, in light of the pandemic, you know, uh, we did extend the deadline to May 3rd, 2022. However, after we received the report from the fire department <clears throat> saying that, you know, uh, there were only six buildings that had passing scores, we wanted to review with condo property owners, condo associations, managers, insurance, design professional types of representatives to see what's happening, you know, in the uh, condo communities and to see whether other assistance is needed. Because once your life safety evaluation is uh, completed, you have a specified period of time. So each building would need to comply with the life safety evaluation within six years after May 3rd, 2018. This was extended one year to May 3rd, 2025. The entire building would need to be protected within 12 years after May 3rd, 2028. I mean, 2018 which would have meant that um, the buildings had to be completed within the 12 year period that would uh, extend to May 3rd, 2031. So because many buildings um, you know, have not quite gotten through the first step, we wanted to bring together um, um, stakeholders to find out what they were facing and what they were experiencing. And I, I really um, applaud Jane and HCCA for pulling together a variety of um, uh, discussions where people are talking about the challenges they face. Yes, and you know, the problem is, and you know, the pandemic, I think just made it worse. I mean, this is something when, when the bill was passed, when the law, ordinance was passed in 2019, nobody knew that we would have this pandemic in 2020, right? Which meant, I mean, it, which meant that a whole lot of people who lived in condominiums lost their jobs, reduced hours, right? And that affected um, the cash flow that comes into an association. And so, you know, um, one of the challenges that, you know, that is created by the life safety evaluation is that you have to do, if you don't get a passing score, you have to do repairs. And one of the repairs is fixing vertical openings or upgrading your fire alarm system. And upgrading the fire alarm system, just the, just the hardware, I'm told, is over a million dollars, which is still better than installing fire sprinklers, which is in multiple millions of dollars. But still, a million dollars is hard to come by, you know, when, when, when people have lost their jobs and, you know, um, you know, aren't working. And so that's the challenge, I think, that is facing uh, condo owners now, now, and the fact that there's so many buildings that didn't get a passing score. And for all of these repairs that we're, you know, most of these repairs that we're doing, we have to get permits. And, you know, there's the, there's the issue of, you know, department planning and permitting and how, how quickly you can get a permit. And so if you've got all of these buildings standing in a queue, I mean, are we going to all, you know, 
are we going to be able to get the you know the permits that are required in order to comply with the deadline set by the ordinance? And that's kind of where we are hopeful that um, engaging in a you know in a community uh, wide discussion that includes condo owners, uh, insurance providers, you know, for condo associations, uh, condo managers, design professionals, and legal experts, we can identify um, through these discussions, you know, what the challenges are and what kinds of steps we should take to uh, provide assistance, either through state or county legislation, funding mechanisms, or other kinds of financial aid uh, procedures. Because the, the more we engage everyone together at the outset, we think that we'll be able to come up with better solutions that will accommodate the, the broad variety of um, uh, buildings and the different circumstances that different condo associations may be facing. For example, one of the um, condo properties in my district is, uh, you know, it's it's viewed as a sort of luxury condominium. Uh, I think this is uh, 1010 Wilder. Uh, you know, they are also among those that are required to comply with this requirement. And one of the issues that their property uh, managers have identified is the fact that there is a very small number of uh, owner occupants in that building. And so coming up with a specific strategy is a uh, you know, very, very challenging issue in ways that we never even heard about at the time that we were um, going through the recommendations you know, for this fire safety ordinance. And at this point, we have uh, tried to build in uh, more reporting requirements for the fire department because uh, we, we know that you know, since we have learned that only six buildings so far have um, received passing scores that we have to work much more closely together in order to find ways to help buildings comply in a way that's gonna um, uh, be cost effective for their condo association and condo owners, as well as provide uh, safety. The, um, the total number of buildings that are affected by this um, fire safety legislation is in and around 370, or maybe it's a little bit lower now. Some buildings have been eliminated, you know, along the way uh, because they either were below 10 stories or their um, internal design did not really fit the criteria. But when you look at the number of units that are involved, our preliminary estimates were that over 50,000 residents, you know, would be affected if penalties were imposed upon the various condo associations for whatever um, deficiencies might befall that particular condo association. And so the um, committee briefing that we're having next week, Wednesday, it's scheduled for one o'clock PM in the Honolulu City Council Chambers. Uh, the agenda is posted at our uh, council website, www.honoluluCityCouncil.com. And uh, we welcome any kind of written or oral comments from condo owners, uh, condo managers, and others involved in this process, because the more information we can collect now, that information is going to help us come up with better solutions. So um, I really appreciate uh, this opportunity with, with Jane today to talk about some of the concerns and challenges of complying with this condo fire safety law. Yeah, and you know, thank you, thank you very much. Anyway, you know, for giving us this opportunity, because you know, I don't think uh, you know when we were when we were you know in the task force and trying to you know address the problem of how to make our buildings safer that we would you know be involved in a pandemic that would affect the cash flow to the buildings. You know, and mm -hmm. you're you're talking about trying to raise maintenance fees now. To pay for the repairs that are re required because of the life safety evaluation, and I know that's that's a you know we're going into budget season now with condominiums. We're going into the budget season, and so I've been asking you know our site managers and our and and our managing agent you know to come up because uh, we 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 did not pass our life safety evaluation. So we're you know one of the the challenges we have is to try to find out what it's gonna cost 
to upgrade our fire alarm system. And like I said, we've gotten, I, we don't have a bid yet, but I've been told it's anywhere from a million to a million two. We have one estimate from uh, the engineer who's going to be engineering all of this. And that proposal is 75,000. And, you know, we still need to get a project manager because you're talking about installing these, uh, these new, that new devices in every unit in our building. So we have 300 units. So, you know, that's gonna take a lot of coordination. So you have to hire a project manager, you know, and, 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 and I mean, it's a complicated project because the, the devices have to be connected uh, to the elevators and to the smoke detectors. And I don't know, I mean, it, it, they were trying to explain it to us, but it's very complicated and it's, you know, very uh, ex ex expensive. expensive. Very yeah. expensive. I do want to make one quick correction. Uh, I erroneously um, identified the time for a public infrastructure and technology meeting as 1 p.m. next Wednesday on June 29th. And the committee meeting is actually at 2 p.m. I just checked the um, agenda and uh, happy to provide you know, additional um, uh, corrections if they are needed. But we have also posted copies of the um, fire department's reports regarding uh, the most recent um, analysis of those life safety evaluations that were submitted as of April, 2021. So, you know, for anyone who may be watching or for condo managers and residents who are interested in learning more about this, uh, this whole life safety evaluation type of process, they can also take a look at the um, committee agenda. And we do have a lot of information that is being added to provide background and context to why we're asking for comments and um, people's observations this year. Because we would like to see you know, um, a coordinated effort in moving forward towards solutions that will help condo owners as well as their uh, condo associations, because this is kind of a massive undertaking. And anytime you, you look towards uh, adopting or implementing a change that's gonna affect over 25,000 condo units, that's a really big project. And you know, knowing how many um, projects are also underway in terms of commercial construction, residential construction, all of the condo properties that have to comply with this ordinance are competing in a marketplace in which um, I understand the cost of materials have gone up, uh, shipping and other kinds of conditions have really um, been dramatically disrupted as a result of the, the pandemic. So the conditions are a lot tougher than what we envisioned at the time we initially adopted uh, this law. You're right, and given that, given that, you know, what you, what you just raised, the fact that we're all gonna be competing for a limited number of contractors and probably supplies and everything's gonna have to come in from the mainland and, uh, you know, for, for upgrading the fire alarm systems and, and fixing the vertical openings and dealing with other things. Is there a chance that we could get an extension on that uh, six-year deadline to, uh, to at least? See, and, and I understand from talking to the fire department that that six-year deadline means that we have to have in hand. We don't have to have our our uh, the work completed. We just have to have permit in hand and a contractor, a signed contract, and something to show that we are actually going to proceed with the work. So it th doesn't mean that we have to have it done. But still, when you think of all the different buildings in town that have to have a contract in hand and a permit, right, uh, within six years, I mean, that's, that's kind of, you know, uh, very challenging, especially given the issues that we all know occur with department planning and permitting. You know, and, and that's the, I think that's a concern that, you know, that um, we're going to have to probably discuss and it might be helpful to have somebody from DPP at that hearing to, you okay. know, tell us, to tell us well, how, I mean, are you going to, you know, 
they, they, they told us, you know, when, when, when the Marco Polo was doing the, the uh, when they were installing their, doing their retrofitting, we were told that DPP had fast tracked their permit, right? It would have taken, ordinarily, it would have taken years for the Marco Polo to get their, in, you know, uh, 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 permit to, to do their fire sprinklers, but we were told that they fast tracked it. So are they going to fast track the, the life safety evaluation repairs? So that all of these buildings can get their 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 work done, and I know the fire department is going to say, "But well, don't wait till the last minute, because if you wait till the last right. minute and you come to us for an extension, we're going to say no because you waited too long." Right. But the thing of it is, you know, I think there there, and what concerns me too is that we're only halfway there. There's a, still about 150 right. buildings in town, and they only have less than a year now, because now the deadline right. is May 3rd, 2022, right? And right. so they have less right. than one year to get their LS life safety value. And it doesn't take long. I mean, from the time we, we contracted and they came and they did the inspection, I think we were done in maybe, you know, 60 days. But still, 150 buildings in town, 60 days, times the number of licensed contractors, I don't know if they're going to get done. And if you mm -hmm. wait till the last minute, then you're, you're going to miss that deadline, that first deadline of May 3, 2022. So is there a chance on getting some extensions? And I know the fire department has, you know, been very adamant every every time I've talked to them. They said, well, you know, if you show you're doing stuff in good faith and for some reason you just can't make the deadline. And of course, we're going to extend the deadline. But, you know, we're going to do it on a case by case basis. This is not comforting. This is not comforting, uh, you know, to me, because I know there's going to be buildings out there that for some reason are not going, you know, are, 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 are delaying or procrastinating for whatever reason. And they just don't understand that the fire department, I mean, this has been a dialogue that we've been having with the fire department for years. And they kept saying, no, 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 we're not going to extend those deadlines. I think for um, the, you know, the condo uh, owners and the condo associations, this is really the period to watch very closely as to you know the progress that is being made by individual properties we changed the 6 month reporting requirement back to a 3 month reporting requirement over this next year because we want to be able to monitor whether or not substantial progress is being made or not so i think from the council standpoint you know one of the potential solutions is extensions but at the same time we want to address the need for either financial or other assistance if you know that is what is holding up the um, implementation okay you know we're kind of running out of time but i want to ask you a question and you know this wasn't something that we discussed but i just you know reading the news you know what happened in miami with the collapse of that condominium and i didn't realize that miami had a certification they have a certificate they certify buildings and this building was going through their 40 year certification. And so that might be something that, you know, the Honolulu might want to think about, you know, in the future, because we don't have any type of certification. And God knows, you know, we don't want something like that to happen to one of our high rise residential buildings, like what happened in Miami. I mean, that's kind of scary when you look at the pictures. True. I, I totally. Uh agree with you that we should take a look at, you know, whatever will help safeguard uh, condo properties because uh, condo properties are an important housing resource and we want to preserve and protect them as long as we can. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we've run out of time and I really, really appreciate you, you coming and uh, hopefully, I mean, word will get out and people will contact your office or at least you know, uh, listen and tune in to the meeting on Tuesday or provide, you know, input so that it can be considered by your committee uh, when, as we move forward on this um, journey, because it is a journey. It just seems like every time, you, you know, you, you know, every time, you know, you move like two steps forward and you get hit with the pandemic and now we're, you know, five steps back. And, you know, so, yeah, it's, it's a challenge and a journey. And, uh, and the end of it is that the buildings in Honolulu are gonna be safer. And, but you know, it, it comes at a price and we appreciate your support 
and your efforts to help all of these uh, high rise buildings, you know, deal with this issue. Thank you so much, council member. Thank you very much for having me. Aloha. Okay, okay thank you. And thank you uh, to our uh, viewers for tuning in and uh, please tune in next week. Raylene Tenno will be your uh, host for the next episode of Condo Insider. Mahalo and aloha. <laughs>